Hello again. I have been browsing through the BBC's latest plan for diversity and inclusion. Their diversity and inclusion plan for 2021 to 2023. In other words, the current one. But I cannot make much sense of it. For a lot of it is not written in English. I do not mean that the text is in Urdu or Kiswahili or anything of that kind, but rather that it is in such impenetrable jargon that I am having enormous difficulty in understanding what the writer is driving at. Of course, it may well be that I am a dullard or fool, but it seems to me that this document, to which I give a link in the description to this video, it's all but impossible to make any sense of without specialised knowledge which most of us do not possess. After some preliminary and meaningless waffle, we come to a page headed Our Commitments, a Summary. Now this sounds promising, and even if I were slow-witted or in the early stages of Alzheimer's, this brief summary should surely be accessible to me. Let's look at the first item. Expanding the pool of diverse senior leaders. We will have diverse succession pipelines for all band F and senior leader SL roles. This will include targeted mapping, mapping of both internal and external talent. I have not the remotest idea of what a diverse succession pipeline might be and nor do I have the faintest idea what is meant by band F roles. I've used the search function on the document, but the expression band F only occurs once more, and there's no explanation at all of what it is. Nor do I know what is meant by targeting, targeted mapping of talent. Do they mean looking for people and offering them jobs? I honestly can't make head nor tail of this. And what about this? Setting a gold standard for inclusion. We will create an extensive programme of inclusive behaviour training to support an inclusive culture, supported by a pan-BBC campaign around seeking out and paying attention to new perspectives. Well, what is inclusive behaviour training and why is an extensive programme of it necessary? What is meant by seeking out new perspectives? Now, if I can't make any sense of the summary, it is not to be wondered at if I struggle with the rest of the text. One or two parts stand out clearly, though. For example, there is the 502012, that's those three numbers separated by um, colons, framework. This means that the ambition is for 50% of staff at the BBC to be women and 50% of the homosexuals working there to talk about their sexuality. I don't know why this should be felt to be a good or desirable state of affairs, but there it is. I quote, 50% of LGBTQ plus staff to be out, which is defined as being open about your LGBTQ plus identity to your manager measured by an annual staff survey. Now call me old-fashioned, if you will, but during the annual staff survey I would have thought that finding out if staff were any good at their jobs would have been a more useful thing for managers to find out about, rather than if women go south on each other or men are committing sodomy. I cannot for the life of me see how either activity can possibly enhance the quality of the programmes for which I pay via my television licence. I have never felt any inclination to discuss what I get up to in bed during a job appraisal review, and unless you're working in a knocking shop, I can't really see why the subject will ever come up. I hope the viewers will forgive my being a little crude, but I honestly can't see what the point of all this is. Looking still at the 502012 framework, I observed that in 2020 the aim was to ensure that 15% of staff were either black or Asian. 
Last year this went up to 20%. Perhaps the most baffling bit is this, socio-economic diversity. This is a relatively new area of best practice and we currently only have 58% of staff who have declared their socio-economic background. Through our 2021 census, we want to boost declarations to 80% and use that data to set a meaningful target. Well, what will happen if 80% of staff do declare their socio-economic background? What sort of target would be a meaningful one? To have more upper-class people at the BBC? Fewer members of the middle class? We're not told. Hmm. Perhaps Jackie Christie, who is Workforce Diversity and Inclusion Lead Race, will be able to explain to us what all this is about. She says that another focus will be to engage in the big HR reset, looking at how we diversify recruitment and support proper onboarding to prevent the attrition rates we have seen in the past. Well, without knowing what the big HR reset is, it is difficult to say what she is really up to. I have no idea either what proper onboarding is, so I cannot say if Jackie Christie is doing something useful or not, or whether she's just some apparatchik whose job entails busybodying around and poking her nose in everywhere. I hope viewers understand what I mean now when I say that this document is not really written in English. The only thing I have managed to glean is that the BBC hoped that they will increase the number of black people and homosexuals working for the corporation. But about whether this is a good ambition in itself, I have my doubts. I could not personally care less if a programme I watch is produced by a black person or a homosexual. What I care about is if it is interesting and technically proficient. There does not seem to be any mention of this in the documents.